I wanted to talk about the function of like um, Western imperialism, specifically Western imperial ideology, how it's justified, how Western imperialists conceive of themselves and the rest of the world dishonest as it may be. Fundamental to understanding what is going on in the world right now is that Western imperialist justifications are fundamentally based on idealistic and moralistic conceptions of themselves and their opponents, not based on anything material. So your average like Vosch, for example, imperialist, his idea is that the USA is run by a bunch of people who try to do good things, but they just make mistakes, right? It's not that the USA has like some very basic material motivations that it tries to further around the world. And in doing so, it obviously runs counter to the interests of the vast majority of people in the world. No, no, no. It's that like people who may have had good or bad ideas in their heart decided to do something because they were motivated by an idealism to do good things or maybe sometimes bad things. And that's the problem. So we don't need to like look at the fact that these things all ended up being bad. Rather, for the Western imperialists, what we need to think about is what simply what was the intent or at least obviously the intent of american imperialism is base materialist motivations they want to do things that that will be good for the american bourgeois and that will be overall good for upholding the global capitalist system because the usa is the head of the global, the global capitalist system today but obviously they can't just say that so they come up with the justification that you know we do these things not because of that we do these things because we're trying to do good things and sometimes they go bad whoopsie Sorry, but we, we had the right idea. Now, that seems obvious to you, probably. If you watch my channel, that probably seems obvious to you. But they don't just apply this logic to themselves. They also apply it to their opponents. So, good example of this, China in Myanmar. China is... Not, to, not so much the extent of the USA uh, with, with other fascist dictatorships around the world, but to an extent supporting the dictatorship in Myanmar. Why is China doing this? Ask the, the Western imperialist with this logic. It would be because China is morally evil. China has like, like an innate morally evil trait that makes it have a desire to do bad things to other countries. It can't be because China has business interests in Myanmar that it's trying to further and defend. It can't be a materialist explanation. It always has to be a moral one. Because the only way that you can justify American imperialism, given that if you look at the material facts of what it results in, the amount of people that it hurts, how frequent it is compared to China doing things that could be called imperialist, it can't win. There's no Chinese-Iraq war. There's no Chinese-Afghan war. There's no 50 coups organized by the Chinese state. You know, the only thing where China really competes is on loans. And on those loans, it's like China, it's another good example too. China gives poorer countries loans. Obviously they want something out of it, but they give, it's still better terms than what the West does. So the West way to combat this is to try and state that China has some special evil ulterior motivations. Whereas the West gives out loans and sure they might destroy entire countries, but the West has good goals at heart. So, you know, maybe their loans destroy every single country they give them to ever, but still, because they have this immaterialist, idealistic, moralistic worldview where everything is explained in this sort of moralistic rather than material way, they can just keep doing the same thing because in their fucked up conception of the world, the end result doesn't matter. All that matters is why you did it, or at least why you say why you did it. So obviously China is motivated by materialism too, but China has a fundamentally different strategy. China has assessed the material situation, decided that trying to build some notion of goodwill with these countries is better for it. And they probably learned from the US on that because the US have fucking destroyed half the world with the shit that they've done. So the US doesn't want to follow China's lead and adapt their strategy to do that. They want to keep being incredibly aggressive, they want to keep doing wars, they want to keep doing coups, they want to do, you know, support every fascist movement all around the world. They know they can't beat China at their own game. China is better than the US at its own game. China is beating the US in, not just the US, but the West, in markets that were previously its, its own sole purview. It previously dominated, like massive state loan, lo loans, like through the IMF, used to be the West was the only game in town. Now we have China, but they don't want to make the terms of their loans better to compete with China. So what they do is they try and frame the Chinese loans as like evil and China as having evil intent. Whereas the worst deal that is being offered by the USA is still somehow miraculously magically better because the US has good intent if you follow their logic. But when you look at things from a materialist conception of the motivations for imperialism, for what big countries do to smaller countries, for why they seek geopolitical power, etc., you can very clearly see what that what is actually happening here is the US is trying the US the West in general are trying to further their material interests around the world in whatever way the most brutal harsh way they think they can get away with in every single instance 
So they have this conception like that, where it doesn't matter how bad what they do to another country is, as long as they get the most out of it. You know, the, the, the people who live there aren't even an afterthought. They don't even factor into this. China isn't really better. It's just seen what the USA does and its leaders have said that causes a lot of ill will. Maybe we shouldn't copy them. Maybe we should adapt our strategy to try and make it more advantageous to us, you know, because we've seen what happens when you invade another country and kill a million people as the US did to Iraq. It makes the people there really not like you very much. So maybe for our geopolitical power, if we're trying to compete with the US, we're trying to dethrone them. It would be better for us if we didn't do that, if we had like a more subtle approach. The US and Western imperialist ideologues can't compete with that. They can't compete with China because China is, has a much more state-run economy, which allows it to insert itself into the, into the markets that they previously dominated and outcompete them. They can't compete with it on the loans because they, their, their loans are fundamentally designed to destroy countries and let them neoliberalize them in the aftermath, whereas Chinese loans are genuinely just like constructed to gain some influence and uh, maybe get some interest out of the deal. So rather than trying to compete with China, and they also can't compete, for example, with Chinese um, tech that is getting better and better and actually competing with their own tech, the Huawei bans, for example, rather than compete, what they try to do is frame themselves as inherently moral and good and China as inherently evil and bad in order to justify trying to evict China from the places where it is beating them in their own game. And that is fundamentally what all of this is about. That's how liberals justify their imperialism. It's through this notion that what we do always has an excuse because we, we, we imagine or we at least lie and say that we're doing it for good reasons. Those other guys are basically aliens, they're automatons. They're just innately evil. No matter what they do, even if materially it is clearly infinitely less damaging than us, it's somehow worse than us. And that is how they demonize China. That is how the demonization of China works. That is how the justification of American imperialism works. See any like liberal streamer who calls themselves a leftist, like who, who advocates for American imperialism, you'll see those sorts of talking points from them. Oh, um, but we did good things, but we try to do good things. So we should keep trying to do good things. No matter how bad they always go, no matter how bad every single similar instance shows us they go for the people who live there. Fundamentally, they are just trying to justify furthering America's and the West's geopolitical interests on the, on the world stage at the cost of most people in the world in a roundabout moralistic way. So that's how it works. That's, and that's what it's for. Always focus on the materialistic explanations because they are all, always very obvious and liberals rely on ignoring them and like twisting the reasons for why things are happening to like, you've seen this with the Russian war and stuff, like them saying Russians have like some sort of innate authoritarian tendency or Chinese people are basically like drones. That's the sort of thing they say to try and avoid anything resembling material analysis always.